Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.4 conservation. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 20.4 you need to describe the term sustainable resource, explain why organisms become endangered or extinct and describe how endangered species can be conserved. For extended you also need to explain how forests and fish stocks can be conserved, describe reasons for conservation programs, describe the use of artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization in captive breeding programs, and explain the risks to a species if its population size decreases. A sustainable resource is one which is produced as rapidly as it's removed from the environment so that it doesn't run out. Some resources, like forests and fish stocks, can be conserved if managed sustainably. For example, by planting more trees than are cut down, forests will grow and continue to provide timber, as well as a habitat for the community of plants and animals. Conversely, unsustainable deforestation practices could result in a loss of biodiversity and even the endangerment or extinction of species. Possible causes of extinction include climate change. Some species may be unable to survive if temperature or weather conditions change. Habitat destruction. Pollution, resource extraction and the clearing of land for housing and agriculture all result in the destruction of habitats upon which organisms depend. Hunting. Some animals are extremely valuable, so there's a big incentive for people to hunt them. For example, the white rhino is killed for its horn, the tiger for its fur, and the elephant for its tusks. Overharvesting. By removing organisms more quickly than they're able to reproduce, populations will decline. Examples include the overfishing of Arctic cod and the extraction of rare hardwoods like mahogany and sandalwood. Pollution. Pollution of the air, water and soil affects the health of plants and animals and their ability to reproduce. Introduced species. An introduced species might consume another animal or another animal's food source or carry with it a new disease or parasite. Endangered species can be conserved by monitoring and protecting species and habitats. Laws are passed that make it an offence to kill or collect endangered species. Armed wardens patrol forests and parks to ward off poachers. And protected zones are established with restricted public access. Education. The media plays a role in raising awareness of the importance of endangered species and the ways in which they can be conserved. Captive breeding programs. Animals under threat of extinction may be bred in captivity to raise their numbers before being released back into the wild. Seed banks. Seeds are stored as a way of protecting rare and important species of plants from extinction. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core. So we'll move on now to the extended section, beginning with the conservation of forests and fish stocks. Forests can be conserved by establishing protected areas where logging and other commercial activities are prohibited, introducing quotas which limit the number of trees that can be cut down in a given area and the logging companies permitted to do so, replanting trees to accelerate the regeneration of the forest and offset the impact of logging, and educating local populations about the importance of conserving the forest and teaching them ways to sustainably extract and manage resources. For example, felling trees in a way that doesn't damage the surrounding habitat. Fish stocks can be conserved by educating fishermen about the impact of their methods and teaching sustainable alternatives. Closed seasons allow fish stocks to regenerate as they provide time for fish to mature and breed. Protected areas in which fishing is prohibited help to conserve endangered species and regenerate fish stocks. Regulating fishing net types and mesh sizes helps to limit the capture of undersized fish and organisms other than the target species. Legal quotas dictating how many of each species of fish may be taken by a fishing boat and the size each fish must be allows fish to reach breeding age and populations to be maintained. Finally, the monitoring of fishing boats and the fish that they catch helps to ensure that no fishing takes place out of season or in protected areas and that boats are using the correct nets and keeping to their quotas. 
The reasons for conservation programs include maintaining and increasing biodiversity, reducing extinction and the loss of potentially valuable genetic resources like plants with undiscovered medicinal properties, protecting vulnerable ecosystems upon which certain species of plants and animals exclusively depend, and maintaining ecosystem functions, including nutrient cycling and the provision of resources. For example, a forest ecosystem cycles carbon and provides food, drugs, fuel and genes. Captive breeding programs are one way of conserving endangered species. In order to improve the effectiveness of captive breeding programs, artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization are sometimes used to increase fertility rates. Artificial insemination involves collecting sperm samples from the male animal and artificially introducing them into a female's reproductive system. Sperm samples can be frozen and delivered from elsewhere, which boosts genetic diversity and eliminates the need for a male. In vitro fertilization, or IVF, refers to the fertilization of an egg outside of the animal. Eggs are extracted and mixed with sperm, and when a zygote forms, it's reinserted into the uterus of the female. IVF allows captive breeding programs to go ahead when a female is unable to breed naturally, or a male doesn't produce enough functional sperm. Finally, you need to explain the risks to a species if its population size decreases. So smaller populations carry less genetic variation, as fewer organisms means fewer traits or characteristics in the gene pool. A decline in numbers might therefore affect the ability of the species to cope with environmental changes in the future, putting it at greater risk of extinction. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.4, conservation. If you enjoyed this lesson, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 21.1, biotechnology and genetic modification.